Wherever you work or whatever you do, you are surrounded by data. It's in your office reports, sales, stocks, clients, environment, people, and more. Yet only few ever harness the power of analyzing that data and applying it to make sense of reality. Scott Page helps readers exactly do that in his book The Model Thinker. He suggests using models to organize the data and information you have. Models help you capture reality, get value from the data, and use that value for decision-making processes. It will help your research, experiment, business, system, or life in general. While some models are familiar, Page presents them in a reader-friendly, fresh perspective. He thoughtfully arranged the models based on their progression of types, assumptions, structure, limitations, and examples. Still, Page suggests you can read the book as if you were visiting the zoo. The order you read the models does not necessarily have to be linear for you to learn something. The book itself is successful for many reasons. One of them is that the author taught this course in Coursera, and it's been followed by more than a million enrolled students online. Although most of Page's examples are geared towards policies or social sciences, the book is still beneficial for students and professionals engaged in engineering, medicine, business or management, and other fields. Here are the top seven lessons from Scott Page's The Model Thinker. Lesson 1. Use models to understand data. Data can be overwhelming when they are scattered, and you do not understand what you're seeing. To avoid feeling overwhelmed, you can use models. They can help organize data so people like you, who need to analyze reality, can communicate information and explain phenomena better. Models categorize data according to variables, qualifications, or categories, so there's a logical coherence that filters data to aid you in strategic decision-making and forecasting. There are many everyday examples of models, such as hiring rubrics and Wall Street investment risks. Some are the results of models themselves, effective marketing strategies, business profits, increased sales, prospective clients, and more. As the famous late financier Jeffrey Epstein said, models develop representative data, or simplified versions of complex systems, that collect data that aim to communicate or educate an intended audience. Because it is a scientific and systematic process, models can be tested, calibrated, and compared. Therefore, they are less susceptible to errors and cognitive biases, unlike humans. Lesson 2. Approach problems with diversity. A model is not a one-size-fits-all solution. On the contrary, because models simplify data, they risk oversimplifying data to the point that it misses relevant variables or leaves out some interaction. In turn, the result may not be as accurate as you would have liked it to be. This is why the author suggested using more than one model when organizing and analyzing data. This many-model approach will help you make accurate predictions, because some models improve each other by compensating for the weakness of other models. Wall Street models evaluating investment risks are the perfect example for this lesson. Many financial experts attribute investment risk to more than just financial market fluctuations and stock prices. Investment risk can be affected by geopolitics, social movements, and terrorism. If we have to consider all these factors, the standard risk model would inadequately cover the whole ground, as it's mainly applicable to addressing stock price correlations only. Thus, investment banks use more than one model to assess risks and make important decisions that benefit them later. Lesson 3. Combine models that complement each other. When using the many model approach, choosing all the best models can be tempting. But as mentioned earlier, when modeling, there's no perfect solution. Instead, models can only highlight, accurately predict, or organize useful data when paired or combined with other models correctly. Thus, while there are many best models that you can use, you have to tailor models according to your data and how models complement one another. Page suggested the following three rules to complement models with one another. Spread attention broadly, boost predictions, and seek conflict. Lesson 4. Spread attention broadly. To make an effective ensemble of models, you will first need to know the strengths and weaknesses of each model. Reading the model thinker is a great way to start this. When you decide on your first model, you may find that it does not adequately cover all the bases of what you hope to predict or get out of the data. So when you choose a complementary model, you can shift its focus on processes or problems different from what the first model targeted. In other words, the second model should catch what the first model missed by including different variables. The second model does not necessarily better than the first model, but rather, its value comes from focusing attention where the standard model does not. Lesson 5. Boost Predictions While collecting, analyzing, and using the data organized by models, you may notice weaknesses in the algorithm. Page suggests addressing those weaknesses through boosting. This approach takes data from all past decisions and shows where the first model failed. For example, one model may show good predictions, however it may only seem accurate because they're isolated from each other. That's a weakness in the model, because it fails to consider what happens when they're not isolated from one another. 
You will need boosting to take the data, see where the first model failed, and search for or build other models that can address the failure of the first model, or complement it. Lesson 6. Seek Conflict Disagreements can conflict, but they are still expected in critical assessments and decision-making processes because they break unanimity and introduce different perspectives. Similarly, you can seek conflict or disagreement among models, so you will know how similar or different they are. If they have contrasting predictions or results, it allows you to understand why they differ and find new solutions to address those differences. Lesson 7. Take Action After coming up with the most accurate ensemble of models as you can, you can finally take action. The models should help you decide what to do next with the information and data it organized for you. You can strategize the moves you will make to improve policies, business plans, or other systems. If something does not seem right, you can always try a new model or make a new ensemble of models to create more accurate predictions and better decisions. In conclusion, Scott Page's The Model Thinker is an excellent reader for anyone seeking to understand the importance of data models, use them to organize their data, and make better decisions based on those models. Page assures readers each model is strong and weak in its own way and can complement one another, depending on what the reader needs them for. Ultimately, the reader must continually assess and reassess data, models, and decisions to make better and effective systems that improve their performance. Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time!